Late stoppages are a major source of controversy in the octagon, and as we've seen in part 1, the referee's judgement call plays a major role to whether the fighter suffers life-changing injuries or lives to fight another day. So here we are again, with some of the most brutal late stoppages in UFC history. Paul Craig vs Jamal Hill. This was one of the worst late stoppages in recent times. At UFC 263, submission specialist Paul Craig took on Jamal Hill. The referee for this bout was Al Guinea, who was a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructor at Gracie Barra Academy in Arizona. It didn't take long for Craig to pull guard and shift the fight to the ground. Hill evaded a few submission attempts from Craig at the start, but then finally got Craig was shocked that it wasn't stopped. Just while well, Craig had to land hammer fist after hammer fist to his head. And the only reason the fight was stopped was because Hill's arm was swinging around so wildly that the ref thought he was tapping out. Dana White took to the press conference and referred to Al Guinea as the Arizona's Mazagai. Al Guinea was taken off the card from further officiating on the night. That's a rough one, yeah. It's a local rough, I heard this guy's a jujitsu black belt. Is that true? Yeah, sure is. If you go to a local fight and he's resting, you know something's gonna happen. Oh, really? He's the Arizona Mazagati? 100%. <laughs> okay, it makes sense then. Remco Pardol vs Orlando White. Now we go back all the way to the beginning to UFC 2 and this was Big John McCarthy's debut event in the UFC. There were no weight classes and the only way to stop the fight was via knockout, submission or the cornerman throwing in the towel. Hardol was a grappler and physically bigger than the kickboxer White and in no time White was taken to the ground and Pardol was on top and holding onto the arm of White. He then proceeded to land elbows from this position straight to the temple of White with the second elbow knocking him out cold as his legs gave out. This is both. Hardol then proceeded to land four more vicious elbows while twisting his body so he could get a good look at his opponent. Yeah. He's out. He's out. Once he finally saw White's face, he stopped, knowing his opponent was out. But John McCarthy was nowhere in sight when this was going on. He then jumped in to take Pardol off his opponent. This was a dangerous late stoppage due to the positioning of Pardol not being able to see his opponent and raining brutal elbows to his head. Big John should have been checking on White while these brutal strikes were happening. However, it was his first event officiating and maybe the no rules policy contributed to John McCarthy not jumping in sooner. Chris Weidman vs Mark Munoz at the time, Mark Munoz was the number 3 middleweight in the world and he was going up against a new contender at the time, Chris Weidman, with the referee Josh Rosenthal in charge of the action. Both fighters are grapplers so everyone expected a close fight, but after a dominant performance from Weidman in the first, the second round is where things took a turn for the worst. Weidman continued his dominance but Munoz eventually got back up to his feet. But as Munoz went for a swinging right hook, Weidman ducked and landed a clean elbow to Munoz's jaw. And a big elbow inside, they landed a shot that has room. Which sent him straight to the canvas. Weidman then got on top of his back and started raining down strikes to Munoz's face. He was clearly out after the sixth shot and no longer defending himself. But Rosenthal let the action continue and Weidman landed a total of 17 devastating punches to the face of Munoz before he intervened to stop the fight. <laughs> This was brutal. Munoz's face was a bloodied mess and had everyone in shock. Well, and then Mark Munoz absorbing a whole lot of strikes, perhaps surprising the stoppage didn't come a little bit earlier there. That. Dana White took to the post-fight show and stated, it was a bad stoppage. I hate that. How can you be standing like this, looking down at a guy getting hammered like that and not think that the fight needs to be stopped? With Rosenthal admitting to the mistake and adding that he was slow on the trigger. And everyone knows what they sign him for, but it's a millisecond basis game. Yeah, I think this beating lasted much longer than a few milliseconds. Carlos Hernandez vs Dennis Bonda At UFC Vegas 75, this preliminary bout was officiated by Jaron Vallel and was controversial due to more than just the late stoppage. Hernandez dominated Bonda for a good 15 minutes and when I say 15 minutes, it literally was. The stoppage came at the very last second of the third round but should have come 4 seconds earlier. After getting the takedown in the third, Hernandez pressed Bonda against the cage, twisting and turning and managed to get the slam. Bondar's head hit the canvas and it looked like he was out at the exact moment. However, the referee let the action continue with Hernandez landing seven clean elbows to the head. Oh! 
after the second elbow and not showing any defense that the fight should have been stopped. But Valel stood there and watched Bonda take an additional 5 elbows to the same spot before calling it off with 1 second to go. I don't know what he was thinking at the time, maybe he was waiting for the final bell or thinking about what he wants for dinner, but he definitely wasn't concentrating on the fight. The other controversy was that the slam was further investigated by officials outside the ring and the knockout was overturned to an accidental clash of heads and the headbutt being the reason Bondar was out. How were you feeling after that? Man, head to head these nuts. If all other referees could see this, how did Valel miss it? Instead oh, of the head. God, yeah, these how do you say that, are, you know? Super unnecessary. Right. Donald Cerrone vs Justin Gaethje At UFC Fight Night in Vancouver, Jaron Vallel was at it again. He was looking at the ref to stop the fight. Vallel didn't intervene, so Gaethje had to land an additional two uppercuts and looked at the ref again, who still wasn't having any of it. He then had to land one more blow before the ref stepped in to end the fight. He's hurt back. Gaethje has him down! It's over! Oh, Gaethje! Gaethje then went on to shadow punch the referee in frustration. I don't know what Vallel expected to happen after Cerrone was on his knees not defending himself. Maybe he thought there would be a miraculous comeback. Who knows? Yoel Romero vs Derek Brunson At UFC Fight Night 35, Yoel Romero, who was becoming a title contender at the time, faced Derek Brunson, with the referee Blake Grice officiating the bout. For a good 40 seconds, Romero ground and pounded the life out of Brunson, and his face was a bloodied mess. Yoel was hitting Brunson so hard he managed to soil his pants in the process. Brunson was curled up with Romero on top, and for a good 15 seconds, he started raining down elbows, 1 to the head, and 13 to the body in the exact same spot. Brunson Brunson looked lifeless, just lying there for the whole ordeal whilst the ref was contemplating whether to stop the fight a considerable amount of time during the 15 seconds. You could also see him wince in pain for Brunson on multiple occasions. Then he finally stopped. Mark Munoz vs Ronan Conyero. The referee Jaron Vallel made a huge mistake at UFC 184 when Mark Munoz took on Ronan Conyero. Straight off the bat, Conyero got the takedown and made his way to Munoz's back. Once he got there, he wrapped up a rear naked chokehold and had it in tight. After 6 seconds of being inside the hold, Munoz was unresponsive, with even the commentary team shouting that it's over. Get he's out. It's gonna be done. I think he's out. I think he's out cold. Jaron Vallel let Conyero keep the submission wrapped up for another 6 seconds to the unconscious Munoz. Munoz was out cold and this was a dangerous stoppage. Valel defended his actions on a podcast after the fight. Uh, you'll you'll remember back a few shows, uh, I received a little bit of pressure on some decisions I made, whether it be the Koscheck stoppage or the Munoz stoppage. I can't as an official guess when someone's going to go out. I need to let them verbally tap, physically tap, or I have to actually see them go out and then stop the fight. Sometimes fans don't know the rules or aren't familiar with the fouls or even the techniques and maneuvers. And, uh, I'm really patient about it, but yeah, it happens all the time. Brock Lesnar vs Frank Mir Herb Dean officiated the most highly anticipated main event of the era at UFC 100 where Brock Lesnar faced off against Frank Mir for the rematch. Everyone anticipated fireworks but it started and ended with Brock Lesnar being in top position and ground and pounding Frank Mir for one and a half rounds, even with the crowd chatting to stand them up. Brock took no notice and in the middle of the second started unleashing a barrage of 16 punches to Mir against the cage. Davidson Figueredo vs Joseph Benavides At UFC Fight Night 2, Joseph Benavides faced off against Davison Figueredo to avenge his loss in the first fight. Little did he know the second fight would end worse than the first. Mark Goddard was officiating in the belt and what happened inside the cage certainly contributed to the late stoppage at the end of the first round. Figueredo knocked down Benavides on multiple occasions and caught him in three tight rear naked chokes throughout the round, which Benavides escaped. So at the end of the round, Benavides got knocked down again and the fight should have been stopped four seconds seconds before it was. The commentator team was screaming, he's out, he's out, way before Goddard made the call. These were 10 more of the brutal late stoppages seen in the UFC. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out part 1 of the terrible late stoppages in the link above. Part 3 will be coming soon. I hope you enjoy the content and have a great day, and I'll see you next time.